Now, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a cleft craft here first, <laughs> and you can ask what is the best way to graft mangoes, and the answer to that is whatever causes them to live. Um, that's the most important thing. Um, um, parafilm because it's a lot easier to wrap up your budwood with parafilm when it's not attached than when it is attached. Hey! I think my son originally got this dog to uh, to attract yeah, girls, so and I, I I think he got it to attract girls because that's always a good idea. <laughs> like you gotta choose what dog you're gonna get. Attract girls. Yeah. <laughs> girls didn't like getting barked at, I imagine. <laughs> so um, I wrapped that with parafilm first. Parafilm is used what they use to wrap uh, uh, test tubes. And then you take that and. Decapitate it, all right? And then, now this knife is actually not beveled. This was, uh, that's an old bandsaw blade. My dad used to make these these knives like this. Black supported wood. And, uh, and all I'm gonna do is make a, a wedge cut like that and then I'm going to take the rootstock and I'm going to split it open like that and by the way the rootstocks are supplied by our friend Mark here so thank you very much Mark Welcome. and then now see, I didn't quite make it a little too dark in here to see, but I didn't quite make it long enough. So I'm gonna cut this off so it's a little cleaner and that way it'll fit flush in there. Okay, like that. All right, yeah. So now that. Ready to go? Ready to go. I've already got it wrapped. So now, stop. You can just wrap this one with parafilm, or you can use grafting tape. This is a Montego. You use grafting tape on the, on the end? Does that use parafilm? The whole thing. I use, I, no, you can't use grafting tape. You can't graft, you can't graft a, a veneer, a, a, a cleft wrap like this with, because it won't, the tape won't, won't work on there and it'll actually crush them. So then, um, but you can use tape for the, to pull it closed completely. Only this part, right? Right. Like now, the wound, or whatever. Right. Because otherwise, sometimes if you use, uh, I'm writing the name here on the tree because I just don't have a label with me. I just realized I forgot to print label over here. Which is important to do. Because if you don't label it, you then forget. you end up with real problems. <laughs> and when you're doing this for, I mean, if you do it for a living, it's all, it's extremely important that you label them. And if you're doing it because it's something important, it also is important. So now, so that's a, that's a, a cleft graph, right? <laughs> different ways doesn't make any difference whatever works but I tend to do cleft graphs more now than anything else but veneers veneer graph which you're going to see right now veneer graphs are useful because you can graph any thickness of 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 budwood to match up to your to your rootstock. So this has to match the between that one and that one. But this one, all right, so now on this one, a veneer graft, you do a veneer cut 
like that. So that's just a very, very thin, I'm just cutting right there. So again, the whole idea is you're trying to match up the cambium. In a tree, there's a very thin two layer, two cell layer thick growth ring that's around this thing. So my idea is you need to get the cambium of this attached to this. So on a, on a cleft graft, it's easier because you're just matching size. But on this one, you have to be a little bit better at cutting, all right? And then what you do, you make the same cut on your scion. So you're gonna hear me say, I say rootstock, which is the, the bottom of it, the seedling. And then I say, I call the part of the tree you want, this is called a scion or bud stick, all right? Scion is, uh, more scientific, I guess. And so you take that cut right there. I'm going to cut it again because there was a little bit of... Uh, yeah, there we go. Like that. Now, I do that. I do that little cut on the top of it like this. You can see how very thin I've mm -hmm. cut this thing. You, you, you ran the cut all the way up, right? I ran the cut all the way up. Mm -hmm. Like that. All right. And then on the back, I do this, and the reason I do this is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cut off the bar like this. And then I'm going to place this here. Okay, now, so it's a little too long, so what I'm going to do... Shunina, don't hit me when I'm doing that. I'm going to make it a little longer. By the way, that's a piece, that thing in my finger right there. I'm a, Is that your skin? That's a piece of the, no, that's a piece of the cambium. <laughs> so that's how thin the cambium actually is. It's that little layer like that. So now I put that there, and the reason I leave the, the little saddle right here, so it'll sit down in it. Okay. And then this one is always good. Oh, pull a rabbit out of there and be amazing. Exactly. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> I didn't plan well enough. I should have done that. <laughs> and then this one, this is probably, it, it's amazing to me that a lot of times, this is one of the hardest things for most people bracking classes, is tying a rootstock. Okay. okay. So I do like that. I hold it with my thumb, push it down there. Is this sticky or it sticks no, to itself? It's not. It, it's not at all. It doesn't stick. You got to wrap. Just have it tight. And so then once you get around like this, it'll start to wrap on and, itself. And you snug it, okay? And it, it stretches, so it's different. Like they sell in hardware, I mean, in Home Depots and stuff, they sell what they call nursery tape. This is not nursery tape, this is stretchier. You can buy this online, you can buy all this stuff online nowadays. Uh, and you do like that. Now, I don't, this time of year, I'm not going to cover the bud on the top. I'm not going to cover the actual places where the buds come out. So instead, I leave it like this. This is Now, this part is just habit for me. This is the way I do it. And I come above it, and I come like that, and then I come down, pull a little bit, and then I actually do a half hitch like that. And I finish it off like that, right? And I don't I don't cover I don't cover anything else like that. It's a hundred hundred percent humidity here, so it's not gonna be any problem. And then on this, I decapitate it then. Um, because that if you don't decapitate it, this part of the tree is going to inhibit this ever grown, okay? The terminal bud will inhibit the laterals. Mm -hmm. So you remove that so that it allows this thing to grow out, okay? You always start that way at the bottom, whereas this one is at the top? Yeah, because this one, you're, you're lining up where the thickness is. On this one, you can do wherever you want. Okay. So if you're, if you're like, when you graph a lot, First of all, you learn uh, 
you learn that you don't want to bend down all the time. You don't want to do it's. It's actually. I mean, I actually stand when I graph a lot now mm -hmm. because sitting down is good, but it it starts to get to you yeah. after a while if you're grafting a whole yeah. lot. Going up and down like that kills me. So now I almost messed up because I almost didn't remember, but I remember which one I pulled. It. I pulled this one's a bolt. Okay. Now again. You can write it right on the tile on the on the bridge stock like would that. It, would it be beneficial to treat these to yeah. increase the production there? No, because you want this to produce as much uh, energy as you can. Gotcha. So that's kind of the key on that. Once this starts to push out, cut it off right there. Oh. Stop, Junie. Junie. Oh, when you say push out, you're talking new growth. It'll start on, to grow. On the sand. When it starts okay. to grow out of that growth, this is the or whatever. Right. And you want the, the yeah, main. Yeah, exactly. So, budding. Danny, was it supposed to pick out? Oh, this is the cut. The one that's on the very corner of the cart, all the way to the end. Yeah. Yes, sir. He's. So you want to leave some leaves on under there. Right? Always you good. You don't want to cut it down here. Correct. The more leaves you can leave, the better. You don't ever want to graft without any leaves. Not a good idea. Now, this is a rootstock that's been grafted a few times. This is not a great idea to keep grafting something that doesn't work. Um, but it's... Um, as we say, you know, do as I say, not as I do sometimes. You say it doesn't work, but that's new growth off of this, no? This one so far is oh, I see. good. Oh, okay, right, right. There, a little bit. So this one has been grafted once, twice, three times, probably four times. Stop barking, Junio. Oh, I see. Okay. So, the idea is... Now I feel bad that I was going to put him in the channel. <laughs> <laughs> so, on on budding, the, again, the, the, the advantage of budding is that you can do this at any time of year, and it's very efficient for your material. So I'm, I'm taking off a single bud right there, and then you have this bud like that, right? Okay. So it has a bud on the top. That's I'm holding the old petiole that I've cut off like that, very thin. That's what seals and Alex do, huh? That's, That's what usually uh, seals and Alex yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. Country. That's how they do it. Now what they take is they take lanolin and other hormones, okay, and they put on it. Old school, the way we did this was we would uh, we would put on a tongue. I had to hold it, not lose it, and you don't get dirty. <laughs> and then you go like this. Then you then you do a cut. Reference of a green or a harder wood doesn't matter. Better. Sure, it's like a, a little mini veneer. It's better. <laughs> in between somewhere, right? You don't want any angles. You don't want angles. You wouldn't go on the bottom. Oh, Typically you don't, but you can. I mean, just don't, it just always depends, right? And then I put that in there like that, okay? And this one, again, if you're, the way when big nurseries, they graft, used to get paid by grafting this and as a grafter you used, we get paid like two cents a bud wow so we could graft a lot okay i used to do this for summers i used to graft citrus and that's how they do citrus okay. and we graft ten thousand grafts in a day right and so and you had to work to do this right it's tiring uh and this one they actually, you'd either use wax or you could, again, use parafilm. And you just wrap it up like that. And so what it, the real advantage to budding like this 
works. It's very efficient of material, and it's um, yeah. It you, you didn't want to waste your time. I mean, it, it's a really good way to get lots and lots of material. Now, the difference would be this isn't prepared. Normally, that you have to prepare your budwood if you're going to do um, if you're going to do budding. So what they do. Um, That's what George Sellon was doing, right? Yeah, exactly. And when, like Gary and all those guys, they come down and they go and we cut off branches like this, take your hand, hold it like this, go like that, and then they would stick them in bags, and we'd stick them in bags and fill giant garbage bags full of these, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of buds. And you leave them like that with water, like this. And when you do that, when you have these things, they actually, one of the big secrets, by the way, they actually leave the leaves on them. And you do them, which is not mm. unusual. This is actually how you do kaimito. It's how you do uh, mame. When you want to the do them with ones. budding. Yeah, the hard ones. You can leave the leaves because these leaves are like a good nurse to it. Sapodilla, maybe? Sapodilla, we do it the same way. And then we would do the same thing like this. These will sit there for, and as a little big, we'd normally be like, like that. And, and after about three days, these leaves will fall off. But they help. They give a little, that little extra oomph to the whole thing and they take. Right, and and it's a good way. Now, when you do that, you can't leave them out in the sun. Obviously, you can't. You gotta have them kind of lower, lower light, in order for them to work. So the one thing when you're doing budding, those are always done in greenhouses, controlled environments, right? So I graft over there where my worm compost is. So I, I don't. That's why I don't do a lot of budding. Okay. Again, back in the day, I did a lot of budding. And, uh, but I did it, you know, in citrus nurseries in the summer to make money. Um, all of the grafting stuff, everybody used to, you know, we used to make a, <laughs> we used to, uh, um, we do grafting around the communities. I used to graft for Brooks. I used to graft for the Kendalls and all those people. And uh, um, it was cheap. Because I was a high school kid, right? I mean, I'm like junior high and high school, I did grafting. I used to teach. I used to teach grafting. Used to do the dog and pony show. When I was in high school, I used to go to uh, go to Haiti. That's where I actually learned to do international agriculture. It was going around Haiti and going to village to village and teaching people how to graft. And so um, it was a really good skill when we were kids. And Daniel used to graft our trees for. He's a, that's my oldest son, by the way there and uh um not just some weird monk hanging out here <laughs> it's okay if i call him that you call him he doesn't make me call him master daniel but you know he's a tai chi master so it's like um, um, the so daniel used to was always grafting our stuff when we uh, early on right so that was uh it's a it's a really good skill to know how to do it's an excellent skill to to acquire um, now, label those, label those. Grab me the another tree there, Dan. A, a regular rootstock, not not one of those grafted. Again, I grafted it multiple times with veneers that have all died. Now I grafted it again with a cleft. Right now, is that? Once again, the idea is um, it would be wonderful not to do that. It's not best to use stuff because you want your rootstocks healthy, you want your budwood healthy, you want everything watered well, you want everything fertilized so that they will, they're growing um, vigorously. Um, there's just a million things of why you shouldn't do that. Maybe. Maybe this thing has genes that maybe it's just not a good uh, combination, right? Or maybe it's a 
uh, a, yeah, I mean, again, we just, you do what you gotta do on it. Now, uh, the one thing you never know is you can have incompatibility between your rootstocks and your scions. Different varieties could be incompatible with what you're doing, meaning that they're gonna die. Um, that's probably the most frustrating thing that occurs. Sometimes they die for no, no fault of your own. Um, if you're grafting on the margins of the time of year and it gets cold, like in the 50s at night, typically your grafts die. If you end up getting a, you're grafting. So I, I like to graft in the summers when it's mm -hmm. like this, when it's rain and things like this. But what will happen is then you'll get to right after the, at least the way it used to be, right after 4th of July, it gets hot, right? It gets sunny and super hot. And this is something that we ended up, it gets brassy and you get all that heat and dryness. And a lot of times that kills your grass. Now, so you can just have a lot of different reasons that it doesn't work. Um, one of the things that always is, again, the, the motion when you're grafting is like that so you see i'm pulling my whole arm right so there's nothing i'm not likely to I'm not going to cut my belly open or i'm not going to cut through my hands the only cut you'll do is if you don't lower your thumb you cut your thumb and a grafting knife a well sharpened grafting knife will definitely open you up quickly and you'll but you bleed a lot it's a clean cut so that's good you don't get a lot of crushing or anything. Um, and the other thing that always happens when you're grafting, so like if you're, I mean, I do that where I work it down like that a lot of times just to get the feel of it because it'll go and all of a sudden it'll go. Phew. If your knife isn't sharp, it'll actually split it and it opens like that and that's when you'll get yourself cut. Um, and the length of your cuts and stuff, you just start to get a good feel for it. So that when you do when you do a lot of grafting, you you end up not having to redo them because you you just get used to it. Now again, the uh, the. Uh, there's, there's art and then there's science to it, right? The science is you need healthy, you need healthy rootstocks, healthy science, you gotta connect the cambium, get them graft, get them to live and heal before they die. The art of it is if you are having a bad day, if you are fighting with your spouse, or all those kind of things, you don't tend to graft well. <laughs> um, I, you get into slumps where you can't make them live. Uh, whenever I do grafting classes, people all, I, I used to always tell people, I say, you know, nobody touches my grafting knife. If they do, I have to resharpen it. And people would say, oh, that's dumb. And it's like, it's not dumb, it's, whatever works for you right you know if you mess with if you touched mm -hmm. jose canseco's bat i'm sure he probably had to go put pine resin on it again right <laughs> i mean it's just the way it goes because again there's nothing that tells you that that's for sure gonna work right so you want to stack the deck in your favor um and i literally would get to the point where you know you do something like go and you know, I'd go harvest one of my chickens or something like that, you know, in order to, we, we 
to raise them for eggs, but when they get too old to lay eggs, we eat them. So I'm not, I'm not saying we're just killing them, we're eating them. Right. All right. So, um, you know, I always tell people that we sacrifice a chicken when it's not, you know, or that's not really true. Um, I'm not that superstitious. All right, now, okay, now the other thing is when you're doing the veneer cut, see, now I just felt, I feel that, I can feel the knife sliding along the cambium. And that's one of the things that you start to get used to when you do a lot of grafting, is you can actually feel that. It's more slippery. Yeah, it, it starts to slide real nice, and you know the difference. The other way I always kind of judge the length of my, my, um, my cuts is because I use the, I use that and how far I can reach. And that's how I also measure things so that I don't, I don't have to recut so many times. So we're buying trees and we like we we have trees that the graft is way too long. That's because that's because it, those were chip butted. Those were butted. Oh, Junio, I don't need to be protected. I'm all right. First of all, you're no good at protecting anybody for anything. Yeah. 